Hi guys, so today we'll be discussing client server architecture and uh, it should be a short tutorial where I just want to um, show you a short hello world or a very basic introduction app in the ASP.NET framework. Uh, so let's to get started we'll be working in the Visual Studio uh, in Integrated Development Environment or IDE. Um, that is the same environment you would have worked with in your first year. Um, so what you would need to do is to just Google Visual Studio Community Edition or Community 2017 and you basically click on the first uh, visualstudio.com forward slash downloads. Uh, it's just my proxy. So I'm going to go in there. You can see that you have Visual Studio Community. There's a free download, um, and you simply download it from there. The Visual Studio Community has everything you need for this course. Um, you don't need the full enterprise or professional edition, which the university has available, but you need the license key. And then there's a lot that we need to get around if we use that. But Studio Community Edition is good enough. So once you've downloaded it and installed it, you just go. So then if we just open that up, then it should look something like this. Okay, the start page and we can start developing. Okay. So in order to create our first uh, ASP web app, uh, we just go file new project it is a web application so under visual c shop we have web um, you would remember that from first year you always used to go to classic desktop and have windows forms app but this time we go for web and we go for the asp.net web application .net framework the asp.net core web application is a newer .net framework but we're not dealing with that in this course. Then you can just go ahead and call it uh, my ASP introduction. So once you've named it, you just go uh, OK. Yeah, it gives you an option of whether you want an MVC app, a web API, single page application, web forms. So the web MVC we're going to do a lot of later, uh, starting from next week. Uh, Web Forms just gives you a default ASP application with some um, pre-built web forms like pages, but we're going to go for an empty one. So once you've clicked on empty, just go OK, and the project is created for you after a short while. OK, so this is just an introduction page and has some links to uh, a few resources. We can just go ahead and close that. And then right click on your ASP, dot, uh, your ASP introduction solution and you go add and you say I want to add a new web form. We call that web form uh, just main or whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, it's just a short intro. And then it creates this um, what seems to look a lot like HTML. Okay. The only thing that would not be familiar to you would be this at the top, um, this line of code here. Um, that is ASP. So this uh, less than percentage and percentage greater than is actually embedded ASP code. Uh, so uh, it basically uh, configures this uh, page to say that the language is C sharp, um, the auto event wire up is true, code behind, it links it up to the code behind and so on. And I'll take you through that in a minute, but the rest pretty much looks like HTML. So if we go over to our solution explorer on the right hand side, uh, we will see that our main dot our main file has been created, but it's not a .html form uh, file. It's a .aspx. So that is for um, active server pages, so ASP page. 
So the thing that makes a ASP page and an HTML page different is that an ASP page actually has what's called code behind. So code behind is actually C sharp code that is linked up with that page. So if we just click on this arrow, it opens up the um, files associated with the ASP file. And if we click the ASPX.CS, then this should look familiar in the sense that it's C sharp code. So this is C sharp code that's linked up to the ASP or if you want to call it the HTML. So this HTML can be affected by this C sharp code. All right. So if we go back to the um, to the to the ASP page, um, you should see this run at attribute in quite a few places. So what that actually means is that the run at server means that this HTML element is actually accessible on the server side. So on the server side form one, which is the ID of this form, which I have the run at server attribute assigned, is accessible um, C sharp side. So we can go and change uh, inner text to whatever if we wanted to do that. Okay, so I actually don't want the form here, so I just want to remove this, save that. If we come back here and we start typing form 1, now it doesn't know what form 1 means because we've deleted that element. There's no form one element that has the run at server attribute assigned to it. All right. So another cool thing about ASP uh, is now we see the source code, the HTML. But yeah, if you look at the bottom, you've got a design option. And if I click the design option, then it's actually a what you see is what you get sort of designer for the HTML. And on your left hand side you've got a toolbox if this isn't visible you can just go and click on view go all the way down and you see toolbox there you click that and your toolbox opens up and yeah similar to what you used to in the form design you've got labels and buttons and all kinds of different tools that you can actually drag on to your web form so I want to drag on a label You can see the label. If I right click properties, it opens up the labels properties here, and I can go and change that label. So, my label. Okay, let's drag a button on. And there we have a button, and we can move that button around as well. Okay, so um, if we go back to the source, here we've got our button and our label, and you will see that you've got this ASP uh, namespace that has been created um, in place of the label, and this element ASP button that has been created in place of the button. So these are ASP specific elements uh, that I've dragged onto the form. And you'll see that all of them have this run at server uh, attribute assigned to it. So this is called button one and that is called label one. Okay, so if I go to my code behind um, and on page load, for example, I can go button one dot text equals Click me, exclamation mark. Okay. Then if I run it, the browser is automatically opened up for me. Visual Studio automatically opens up the browser for me. But what it also does is in the background, um, an IIS Express web server is created. So it actually pre-compiles uh, the C sharp that I just wrote 
and it deploys it to a web server okay uh, so yeah you can see that the url is actually not a file path but it's a, a path to localhost um, port 51722 which means the server is listening um, at localhost meaning it's sitting on the same uh, computer that my browser is on it's listening on a particular port and uh, it's a web server so I can provide a path to the file on that web server and it returns this content so what's also interesting is you can see that the click me text has been added to this so if I go right click view page source um, and I actually go to where my button should be you should see that there's actually no ASP element anywhere this is pure HTML so as we discussed in class the server does its processing before this page is actually returned to the client so the, re the result from those processes run on the server is always pure HTML okay so that line of text that I have here or this line of code C sharp code button one dot text will come here change this text and the resultant HTML will actually be returned to the browser and this is what it looks like that is called server-side pre-processing so what I want to do now is every time I click the button it should make a request to the server so the so that the server can update the page and print out the current date time on this page so let me do that i just stop the server so at this point in time if i go to my browser and go localhost 51722 main aspx then it all tells me the site can't be reached and the reason for that is that my server my web server isn't running so at this address there's actually nothing at the moment there's no server running there okay so uh, now what I want to do is go back to my design if I double click this button uh, then a if a function is automatically a function stub is automatically created for me here and if I go to my ASP and the source you can see how the run at server has been allocated to the button as previously but now we've got this on click um, event attribute that has been assigned to the button uh, and basically what that means is that this button when it's clicked will actually reload the entire web page but before it returns that entire web page the code at that function will run first once the button is clicked this piece of c-sharp code will be pre-processed before the html is returned so what i can do is go label one which as you guys know by now is the id of my label uh, which has a run at server that's why i am able to access label one here dot text and here i go date time dot now this you would notice is not javascript but c sharp meaning it's strongly typed with c sharp we actually have to work with types so now we start we have to do conversions of data types unlike javascript okay let's just save then i run and now when I click it, that date time is actually updated. Okay, so you can see that the entire web page is actually refreshing. All right, so that's your first very basic introduction to ASP.NET. You can obviously get far more advanced than this, um, but through this you should be able to see the interaction between the server and the client. The, browser. Thank you very much and cheers.